Okay, this is an interesting problem. This is 3.6, number 14. Estimate the area of the surface generated by revolving. So we've got revolving, so we're talking about surface area. Revolving the curve, y equals cosine 2x, along the interval from 0 to pi over 4 about the x-axis. And we're going to use the trapezoidal rule with three subdivisions. So this is kind of a nice uh, throwback to our work in Chapter 2, where we did surface of revolutions and surface area uh, of revolutions. And then we're going to apply the trapezoidal rule. Excuse me. And the benefit of the trapezoidal rule is that you're able to um, uh, get an approximation. And the, bit, the more intervals you have, the better, the more close uh, the approximation is going to be. And so we're talking three subdivisions. So I took that pi over 4 minus 0 divided by 3 to give me pi over 12 is my progression. So if I were to look at this on the intervals 0, then a pi over 12, then a 2 pi over 12, which is pi over 6, then a 3 pi over 12, which is our pi over 4. So we have 1, 2, 3 different uh, subdivisions for this, for intervals. And so let's go back and talk about what does the surface area formula look like. And our surface area is going to be the integral from a to b of 2 pi times f of x times the square root of 1 plus f prime of x, that quantity squared, dx. So in this, our f of x is the cosine of 2x, and f prime of x is going to be negative 2 times sine of 2x, because the derivative of cosine is negative sine. And then the 2 comes from the derivative of the 2x. So if I set this up, our surface area formula is going to be the integral from 0 to pi over 4 of 2 pi, that's a 4 out of 9, 2 pi times cosine of 2x times the square root of 1 plus quantity negative 2 sine of 2x squared dx, which if I pull this 2 pi out, I'll have 2 pi times the integral from 0 to pi over 4 of cosine of 2x times the square root of 1 plus negative 2 squared is 4 times sine squared of 2x dx. Okay, so there's our, our formula. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and call g of x the thing in the integral, the cosine of 2x times the square root of 1 plus 4 sine squared 2x. So that's what I'm going to call my g of x, because the next part is we're going to be getting into the trapezoid rule. And our trapezoid rule, our t sub n, is going to be 1 half times delta x times g of x sub 0 plus 2 times g of x sub 1 plus 2 times g of x sub 2 plus g of x sub 3. Okay. So our t3 is what I should have called it, is going to be 1 half, and our delta x was pi over 12, times pi over 12. By the way, this is just for the integral part. We still have that 2 pi sitting outside. from the integral from up here. This, this, this 2 pi right here. Okay. And then we're going to have g of 0 plus g, two, excuse me, 2 times g of pi over 12 plus 2 times g of 
pi over 6, which is 2 pi over 12, plus 2 times g of pi over 4, which is 3 times pi over 12. So let's evaluate each of these. Our g of 0, this really isn't as bad as it may seem, is going to be cosine of 2 times 0 times the square root of 1 plus 4 times sine of 2 times 0. Well, we know that, oh, that's a sine squared. We know that sine of 2 times 0 is 0, so that's just 0 here. And to 4 times 0 is 0. We also know that cosine of 2 times 0 is 1. So this is 1 times the square root of 1 plus 0. It's 4 times 0 is 0. So that's 1. G of pi over 12 is going to be cosine of 2 times pi over 12, which is pi over 6, times the square root of 1 plus 4 times sine of 2 times pi over 12 squared. So that's cosine of pi over 6. Everyone knows that. Say that in unison, please. Uh, times the square root of 1 plus 4 times sine. I'm just going to do sine of pi over 6 that we're going to square. Um, by the way, that negative 2 was negative squared out. That's why there's no negative here. Cosine pi over 6 is square root of 3 over 2 times the square root of 1 plus 4 times sine of pi over 6 is 1 half. So we have 1 half squared, which makes it 1 fourth. So we have the square root of 3 over 2 times 4 times 1 fourth is just 1. So it's times square root of 2. So it's the square root of 6 over 2. Our g of pi over 6 is cosine of 2 times pi over 6 times the square root of 1 plus 4 times sine squared of 2 times pi over 6. And everyone knows 2 times pi over 6 is pi over 3. Yep. So we're looking at cosine of pi over 3 times the square root of 1 plus 4 times sine squared of pi over 3. So it's going to be the square root of, I'm sorry, it's just one half this time. Cosine of pi over 3 is one half. Times the square root of 1 plus 4 times sine of pi over 3 is square root of 3 over 2, or squaring that quantity. So we'll end up with one half times the square root of 1 plus 4 times 3, because square root of 3 squared is 3 over 4. So it's 1 half times the square root of 1 plus the 4's divide out, 3. So it's 1 half times the square root of 4, 1 half times 2, or 1. And finally, g of pi over 4, this one's kind of interesting, because we have our cosine of 2 times pi over 4, which is pi over 2 times the square root of 1 plus 4 times sine squared of 2 times pi over 4, which is cosine of pi over 2. Anyone know what that is? Times the square root of 1 plus 4 times sine squared of pi over... I've uh, got too many lines there. Pi over 2 getting excited here because it's coming together pretty well. So we now cosine of pi over 2 is just 0. That's 0 times the square root of 1 plus 4 times sine squared of pi over 2. That's sine of pi over 2 is 1. Squared is 1. So, but it really is irrelevant because the 0 makes the whole thing 0. So what we have then is 2 pi times our t3. So it's going to be 2 pi times, uh, that was 1 half times pi over 12. 
um, pi over 24 times g of 0 is 1 plus 2 times the square root of 6 over 2 plus 2 times 1 plus 0 and I put that in my calculator and I came up with 4.482025662 and they just wanted to four places so back to there but that's what I came up with okay I hope that helps